Welcome to Social Media Meltdown here on JustCoolEnough.com. I'm Joe. And I'm Kaylin. And we're here for another week. This is episode three. We're going to be talking about online activism. And, uh, well, let's get started. Let's talk about some activism online. There's a whole lot of stuff in the news. There's a whole lot of stuff on the internet. Actually, not in the news, but definitely on the internet. It's just been an uproar between this whole Joseph Coney thing and then, you know, how support wanes and this and that and this. What do you got for us, Caitlin? I mean, the social activism has has been in the news. I mean, you you kind of took back your your news statement, um, but you can you can bring it back. Uh, social activism has left social media and then is making its way into mainstream, um, and we see that a lot with Coney. It's getting a lot of um, it's getting a lot of old school media. Um, attention as well as new media which which is where it storm it stemmed out of it i i think that was that that was the real story the, the kind of thing that really interested me was the firestorm that was created um if you're not familiar with it, this whole coney thing that happened where have you been how how did you even access the internet without seeing something about it but how did you make it to this video without <laughs> So we, we'll just assume that everybody knows what's going on there. But, it, I mean, it started off with just, I mean, this was pure grassroots. Like, what, or is it more nefarious than that? How? I mean, I, it did stem out of Invisible Children, mm -hmm. it is, which is who produced the video and sent it out. And they have a huge following and a huge um, audience base already, um, including a lot of celebrities. And they reached out to a lot of celebrities to endorse it um, for when they broke the news. Yeah. And uh, some of the celebrities are starting to take it back a little bit um, since it's been getting so much media attention and it's not necessarily the attention that they want. Um, but they had some higher powers kind of going on to help them, but they still really leaned on social media and to have all these um, celebrities and big names put it out there uh, and allowed it to go viral. So um, where did you, because me as just a normal guy, <laughs> um, I, I saw it on on Reddit first, maybe like a day and a half before it actually got like crazy big. And I saw it and I was like, this is interesting. People should know about it. And then I I just was like, okay, you know, that this is this is good. I'll vote on Reddit. I did my part for the cause. <laughs> but uh, so like when when did you see it? Where did you hear about it? Because I know what breaking news usually for me is Twitter. Twitter happens, and that's where I find out somebody dies. That's where I see what's trending. That's where I see what's going on. And uh, it was kind of weird that it was here on Reddit, and I was like, oh, okay, cool, Reddit. And by the way, reddit.com, if you don't know what it is, go there, check it out. But um, so where did you see it first? Um, I have a list of just um, – I have a lot of lists on Twitter. Um, and one of them – I think I, it came out of my social media list um, – that I follow all day at work. It's more interesting than my friends normally. Um, <laughs> and uh, I had seen it come up a lot. And I think it was maybe like the day before, like Mashable and stuff like that um, broke the news. And I just kept scrolling past it because I was like, I don't know what this is. And it doesn't have to do with tech. It doesn't have to do with social media. Well, yeah, and I'm like, I don't really care. And then the more attention I got, and I was like, okay, I just need to sit down and like read about this and watch the video and, and, and see what's going on here. Um, and I think, I can't remember who, who actually like analyzed the video, but most of the video isn't even about Coney. It's like 25% of the video is about Coney, and the rest of it is you evaluating your own life, basically. And uh, so it was kind of weird. I don't know. The, just the way it went viral is really unique. Yeah, uh, it, 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 seemed like, uh, it seemed like something that went viral uh, really weirdly. It, it wasn't – I didn't see it through my normal uh, – my, you know, my normal feeds, my my RSS readers and things like that. I, I didn't get any weird notifications in that. And I think the reason behind that was it wasn't a technology story. It wasn't a funny cat. It wasn't a gaming story. It wasn't something, you know, a new meme. It was something that was uh, much more of a personal experience. Mm -hmm. And then also the length of it made it a little less shareable because it was a video to start. 
and it was long and not it, i mean it would be like doing a 30 minute video on some another controversial topic you know abortion or or you know like something like that it, it was everybody had an opinion about it too so it offered yeah. this really cool aspect and the coolest thing after this this happened um I, I mean, like, there was so much discussion online that was really interesting. You really got to see people defending and doing point, counterpoint. And the way that uh, – the way that I, I just was watching all my sites just explode and erupt with this. And I thought it was very awesome just to watch. It was kind of like a train wreck. You know, you're just like, oh, my gosh, look away. It was a, it was a Facebook train wreck. Was it, it was. a Facebook train wreck <laughs> for you, too? Woo, woo. Oh, yeah, totally. But I jumped. I mean, I jumped on the train. I shared the video, but mm -hmm. um, I I was like, okay, let's share it. Let's see what's out there. I thought it was really interesting that they were getting so much press. And um, I always I I don't know if I should have shared the video at this point. You know, like you were saying, you seen not that I'm a celebrity, but the you've seen a lot of celebrities kind of like bring back their support of it because they didn't realize it was going to get so controversial. And I still stand behind you know, sharing the video, because, I mean, the way I shared it is, like, what do you make of this? Like, this is yeah. pretty freaking interesting. Tell tell me what you think, because um, it obviously was controversial, you know? There's one thing about um, online activism or social activism is that immediately people see something and they're like, I'm reposting it, and then they click reblog, repost, retweet, whatever. <laughs> And they don't take the time to go back and actually, one, think about what they just saw or read. Mm -hmm. Two, to make sure it actually makes sense. Or Three, that it abides by their own values as an individual. And then is it actually factual? That was the one thing. Like, there, I mean, the internet is so 100%, you know, go, 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 go. If... If you're not at the top comment, your comment's not going to get seen. And I don't know if people were just worried about something like that, but it, it seemed like people really just rushed to throw this thing out there. And, they and did? I, I mean, like, the, the coverage of it was, was pretty, pretty crazy. But I haven't seen anything else like this as far as, like, activism goes. Like, I, I've seen the most social activism that I've seen prior to this that I can remember – is like the cat that got its leg chopped off and, you know, share this video so somebody adopts this pet or something something like that. You know, it still had some sort of base in the Internet. Uh, I don't even know. The stew of the Internet, you know, like it kind of, you know, like, oh, it's a cat. Everybody likes cats. Nobody wants to see a pet suffer unless you're freaking crazy. And yeah. So this controversial issue coming up to the top, I think it shows a sense of maturity on the Internet. Now, not maturity on the level of, of you know, sharing it and whether this is right or long, wrong, but maybe the internet's growing up. You know, maybe we're brushing up on the, maybe we're going through our awkward teen years. That's so cute. <laughs> now we're all responsible and we're gonna post politically correct things. <laughs> Maybe not. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. No. I'll suggest it to my Facebook friends though. Yeah, we can start it. Let's start a revolution. Yeah, being politically correct on the internet. Well, that's part part of. I mean, part of the internet that is so entertaining is that part that isn't politically correct, because you can look at it like a zoo. It's like, what is going on? Really? I know. Really? So. Yeah, you're safe outside the cage, and you can just point and laugh. <laughs> but anyway, um. This whole thing that, that went on with with the Coney stuff, like I was saying, I haven't seen something like this get so popular. And uh, why do you think it's so limited? What what were the factors here? Do, do you have any ideas on that? Well, do you mean you haven't seen anything uh, this humanistic? Maybe, yeah. Like that, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. Excellent use okay. of your vocabulary. Because <laughs> I was going to say, there are some other examples of, of activ activism cases that have really taken off. Um, in a short amount of time but this one um and like you said because it's not maybe it's just us because we really only follow like more technology-based news that that's why it kind of snuck up on us and but maybe if you follow more of the volunteering and human caring people <laughs> online then maybe maybe this would have made more sense to you um 
But I think it really comes back to, and actually a lot of the people that I'm friends with or follow online that were the ones that were putting it out there first are the people that are really into um, following celebrities and uh, all that, you know, pop culture news and stuff like that. So I think uh, Invisible Children really played off the fact that they had a lot of um, name brand people out there that they could have push this out um, to the masses that are a little less cynical than we are. That was it, that's something we should talk about too. Let's not forget the backlash that was caused. I mean, after the initial ah uh, feel good moment of everybody liking something, there was a whole lot of backlash to this. Because then there's the people like like our kind of people that are more like let's let's actually look at this. Let's Google this guy for a second, <laughs> but and yeah. see what's actually going on here. And this is, this is like, yeah, exactly. This is the part that kind of bothers me, especially about specifically the Coney thing is like, they are trying to help, but you don't know who you're helping, what you're helping, or what's going on, and you're just blindly following, which, you know what, for a good cause, it's like, yeah, you're doing a good cause, but do you really know? Like, what, what is the plan here? But Exactly. So, so I, I think that... Uh, I know our listeners, if, if you've made it this far into the show, is the kind of person that is going to be, you know, researching this stuff before they're blindly liking something or posting something. And that was actually on my Facebook. I, I, I posted it, and then I got a bunch of, like, crap for it. Like, hey, you can't believe you, this and that and this. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, I had – and I'm sitting there, like, defending myself. Like, it's good, you know, like, they're they're trying to help people, but – you know, yeah. let's see what this is about. Let's see what this turns into. It was, uh, and if nothing else, it's a, it's a case study for, um, viral campaigns. Oh yeah, it's, totally. How can we it doesn't matter what what campaigns? you think about it, and what, how you feel about the subject or the people or or anything like that. It comes back to, how awesome is it that literally overnight they were able to reach, you know, the masses of the internet. Yeah, absolutely. The I mean, like you had you had a lot of stuff to pull on for that video. You had the interactive interaction of a a parent in a in a in a baby, you know, and they tied that into an easily definable criminal. Um, so they painted this super villain. You had a a relationship there, and I mean, they crafted it together like a small movie. It was this wasn't just some you know cut rate like, hey YouTube. Uh, man, I, I just need some money for Taco Bell. Like, you know, it was like, like they, I mean, this was very well thought out. And it was. The production value was very high. And, and that was something I, I don't think I've seen before either. In these, in, I mean, it was a very strategically placed marketing effort. Yeah, and once again, you're, and you, and you're coming back to um, what Invisible Children has available to them. I mean, they're backed by... A lot of people you see um, recording artists wearing their T-shirts at concerts and at um, red carpet events and the whole nine yards. So I mean, I think they have a lot at their at their disposal to be able to to do this with. So, did you see once the backlash started in it? Did you see this support waiver for this thing? Yeah, I can't I can't think exactly which celebrities celebrities it was but there was a lot of drama with people kind of taking it back because after um a lot of the larger news agencies started you know breaking all these uh stories on you know what's actually going on and how you know whatever i'm sure if you google the drama around it you'll learn all about it but a lot of people started taking their stances back which gets me back to online activism is great but you, you have to know yeah. what you're supporting. A hundred percent, absolutely. And then the other thing that that kind of, I mean, is online activism practical for something like the Coney case? I mean, when you look at something like um, the uh, this Occupy Wall Street movement, where it was used as a communication tool and to get the word out, and it was very much a grassroots thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Occupy Wall Street was using the same kind of viral campaign and social media to to construct, I mean, the whole movement. And it, it seemed like it was better suited for that. Something like this Coney thing, it's like, hey, donate money to a site that, I mean, what, what are you going to, are you going to arm a bunch of, are you going to arm your own child army? I mean, like, what do you, how do you solve this problem by, I mean, okay, so I'm, 
with 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 the Coney thing, it's like where do you go from there? And exactly. I've, I, it's like okay, that's nice. A lot of people know about it, mm-hmm. and um, but it it doesn't seem like it's it's almost as fitting as something like Occupy Wall Street or or because because the. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Um, Occupy Wall Street had more of an action as their Mm -hmm. endpoint, whereas I think the Coney video is more of an enlightenment, and while you're at it, now that you feel better about yourself for being knowledgeable of what goes on outside our country or outside your house. um, (laughs) There there was a call to action in the video, though. I mean, it said, like, hey, whatever, the 21st or something, we're going to... We're gonna get them, <laughs> you know. Like we're gonna pace the city with with posters. But yeah, I yeah. So I mean, they're they They just in the end, I I really just think they just wanted money. Really? They, they, money they, and awareness. I don't know. That's just that was how I kind I, of felt about it. I mean, what about um? I mean, does the awareness actually hurt? I mean, it does it hurt? to press like and forget about it. That's I think that's the big question that that pisses everybody off. It's like, okay, you like this, does it help? But by not liking it, does it does it help? <laughs> you know? Um well, by by not liking it, you put another, you know, stop to its um to it being able to go viral. Mm-hmm. Um if a bunch of people are saying, "No, I don't agree with that," then it kind of it stops at least on your pathway um so it might still it's gonna make it by but you kind of put a stopper in front of it um but by liking it you're just getting the word out there more i guess but i mean like as a as a social tool i don't know how effective it is to to have a a a movement i mean like it's obviously the most effective way to go about it but mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know what it can translate into in a case like the Joseph Coney thing because it's not like you can like you know what I'm pissed off. I'm gonna pick up a a gun. I'm gonna go over to Africa and I'm gonna hunt them down or you or you know like I I mean like with with Occupy Wall Street, it's like you know what I'm pissed. I'm gonna walk out of wherever I am right now. I'm gonna go to my local city center. I'm gonna find my Occupy Wall Street movement. I'm gonna put up a snarky sign and. And then you're doing something at that point, so it's accessible. I don't think there's not an accessible thing no. to this. It, the the no, Coney campaign it, doesn't lend itself well to social uh, social activism. Exactly, and that's what gets me back to. I I think their main movement was mainly money. I mean, they they didn't put well, this video out there hoping that people are gonna go to Africa and they're gonna you know take a stand because uh, uh, but they're not. Uh, uh, of course, it's money because. How else? I mean, what? I mean, that is the root of it. And it, I mean, how else? How else is an American? How else is a middle class American going to be able to help this situation? Uh, they. I mean, they. I know they talked about you know calling your congressman, making sure it's there in the fabric of the the election. Um, I mean, they. They're. Lo- I. And of course, you're looking for money because you don't. You don't put yourself out there with oh, that well-produced video unless you're looking for money. <laughs> you're like that, and I think maybe if they were a little bit more straightforward with that, I would feel less slimy about it, or uh, maybe more people would feel less slimy about it. Yeah, because they they I mean they were like just donate two dollars. I mean maybe they just didn't want to center on that. There's a whole because I mean if you look like you're begging, then that would have just exactly. fell flat on its face. But they did do. A- a, a really good job at raising awareness um That's whether right. it, it literally gets people to act and and the activism um but i mean they it, it goes back to the non-traditional pr which is um kind of taking over the public relations world before we used to have to um go out there and and pitch stories to newspapers and news agencies and hopefully they'll pick it up and now we can go out there and publish our own content and have it go and take off and have a whole life of its own. And um, that just shows you the, the power of the internet and what it, what it's able to do, whether people agree with it or not, or want to give money or don't want to give money. It, it's going to end up on the news if you get enough people talking about it. Either way, at the bad very press least, is good press. 
Yes, and and that's true. At the very least, it raises a tremendous amount of awareness. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested to see um, how they translate this giant head of steam that they have, because they do have a lot of, I mean, they do have a lot of people that are technically behind them. I want to see how many of the people that liked and shared are actually active in the next step of this solution. Who's going to get out there? I, I, in my guess, my guess is, I mean, if you have a thousand people, maybe ten of them will, will comment, and maybe, maybe you know, two hundred of them might give you a thumbs up or down, but. But you don't. I mean, like, I, I think you can kind of, kind of apply something like that to this giant online active. If they get a million people, I, I mean, if a hundred thousand people are out there helping or something like that, then that's a hundred thousand people that they didn't have before that are active and participating in it. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's bad, but I understand why it's bad that people blindly support things that they don't know anything about. Because this could be, you know, like. I mean, it could be something completely asinine, and somebody can just get behind it and follow it, and it can be dangerous. It absolutely can be dangerous. And you you kind of touched on a really important part about the about people giving thumbs up and thumbs down. So all these people have I I didn't look at what the number is right now, but I don't know. I'm gonna guess well over a million people have watched the Coney video, oh, yeah. video, and that's all they'll talk about in terms of success. But do they count the thumbs up versus the thumbs down or the negative comments versus the good comments? I mean, I know they are now, but at first it was just like, this video has been viewed, you know, hundreds of thousands of times in the matter of 48 hours. And, um, but I don't think they really did the analysis of, of the <laughs> feedback they were getting right away. I mean, no. they do now, but. And that's, that's, that's true. But, uh, you know, like, if we look at our video for Social Media Meltdown, like, last week, like, I think, like, two or three people gave us a thumbs down. That's, like, oh, 3% of our audience hates us, you know, like, or... That or just got so sad. They, what, you don't pay attention to this stuff? I did, but I don't think I, I looked at the thumbs up and thumbs down. I know I checked it today on my lunch uh -huh. to see if there were any comments and stuff, but... Yeah, nobody commented on it. What the heck? They did the other one, though. I know, the other... Well, that was the first episode. That's always... Lots of fanfare with that, but uh, well, I would think it'd be the worst episode. <laughs> it probably will be. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, we'll have our off day eventually. Yeah, one of the no, that's impossible. We'll never, I never have an off day. Ever, I'm always a hundred percent good. Um, I'm always awesome. <laughs> always. <laughs> I don't suppose that you're looking at the live stream right now. I am. Is there any questions there? Are there any questions that the live stream, which uh. 7 o'clock Eastern time? No. Any questions? Any questions? Questions, please. I don't think that... Uh... No. No. Okay. No. Well, we'll Everyone's on. shy tonight. <laughs> Jump onto the live stream, though, uh, if you do want to participate with the show. It airs at 7 o'clock Eastern time, and the live stream link is at justcoolenough.com. That is justcoolenough.com. And you can also send us an email. Our email address is socialmediameltdown at justcoolenough.com. Again, socialmediameltdown at justcoolenough.com. Send us an email. Let us know what you thought was <laughs> you, you let us know what you thought because is this an interesting situation for you? Did you find it as fascinating as I did? Did you think it was kind of blah? Let me know. Let Caitlin know. Yes. So uh Did you check the email this week? I did. And? Well, let me check it again. <laughs> but while I'm doing that, why don't you uh, do your uh, your plug for this? My time. plug for me. Um, I just want, you know, along the lines with uh, social activism, I just want people to go out there and uh, check out Kickstarter.com. I know everyone's familiar with it. Um, and as even though people are familiar with it and they know what it is, um, I don't know if they necessarily ever – go on it and browse through some of the really awesome projects um, that are going on. Um, I know there's someone that lives in my area in, Mich in Michigan, um, has a Kickstarter out there taking donations to turn his old VW van into a solar powered vehicle so he can drive across the United States, which is kind of cool. Um, but there's a lot of interesting projects out there. Um, 
donate if you want, become inspired yourself to do something great. Um, either way, it's a really awesome resource just to just to browse through and, and see how creative and innovative people are. Um, and then you might, you know, decide to back someone, which is also cool because they always offer you stuff. You get free stuff when you back people. I know um, I back, uh, speaking of noble causes, I back the, the, uh, the Double Fine Productions, um, a, a video game company uh, that wanted to make a new video game, but wanted to completely jump the, they didn't want to go through a publisher. So mm. they said, uh, they said, you know what, we're not using a publisher. If you want to be part of this video game, give us 15 bucks. All we need is like $400,000 and we'll make you a video game. You could be a part of it. And uh, it's been like 30 days, and they just cracked $3 million. Oh, my gosh. Yes. So uh, that is pretty awesome. Um, I, I Maybe yeah, I'll put that as a link <laughs> because that's kind of cool. But um, It is. Yeah, it, it actually is. We didn't get any good emails this week, so uh, come on, guys. Step it up. Did we get any good spam email? No. I mean, I no, but I will thank I eat cheese again, or I ate cheese because that was the the other email. He's a, good, he's a okay. good guy. I like all the good spam email. Like when I win, or I I'm now the princess of I don't know something, and I got a bunch of money, and <laughs> if I send someone my social security number and my address, I can claim the money. That's all you need. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's all I want. I know when I uh, <laughs> that, that that's it. That's all it is. Uh, I don't have a really good special feature for this week, though. Um, I did find an awesome video of a Darth Vader riding a unicycle and uh, playing the bagpipes as he was playing the Imperial March. Maybe I'll put that in the show notes so there's something there for you. But That sounds uh, interesting. I know, it was very interesting. Uh, anything special going on this week, though, uh, specifically for you that uh, people need to be aware of? No. Nope, nothing, nothing. <laughs> no, my life's very... Uh, uninteresting. I'm on spring break and um, I'm going to spend it uh, probably blogging and I don't know. I still work so it's not really like I have any time off. I know. Spring break's a joke once you start working. It's like... I know. I only go to class one day a week, one night a week for three hours so I don't know. I just have an extra night to spend Three at hours off. All right. Yeah. Congratulate Your Wednesday, they're wide open now. And the um, thing is, I used to go to class, and it was a social media class, so I used to just blog and tweet <laughs> while I was in class. Is it is it considered cheating if you're tweeting in class? <laughs> like No, we're encouraged to tweet. We even have our own hashtag, and we interact with each other after class, and then we post like relevant articles that, with the hashtag so everyone in our class can see. Oh, that's, that's cool. cool. That is really cool. That's a good use of social media. It uh, is. Anyway, uh, you could follow me on Twitter. Yeah, no, no, no. You're supposed to say yes. We're a team now, Caitlin. You can't hate me. I'm sorry. Please follow us, uh, Joe at Caitlin Shelby on Twitter. You could follow me at Speedia40. The the things on the bottom. I'm doing the YouTube thing again. But um, yeah, you could follow me there. And there. you can follow me there. There. Caitlin Shelby. At Caitlin Shelby. Exactly. Do you have interesting things on yours? On my Twitter? Yeah, you do. I do. It's gotten very interesting. I like I like the infographics. Keep them coming. I will. I post a lot of good stuff. Okay. I, I post a lot, but it's always relevant. I'm not going to waste your time. That's true, yeah. That's There's... what I always tell everyone. I post a lot, but it's all good. I mean, especially when it's a Reese's chocolate cake thing. Yeah, I, I Instagram a lot and I retweet a lot of like news articles, but I've always read them first, so I wouldn't make you read something I didn't read and think was interesting. Exactly, that's the way to do it. And if you follow me, you find uh, funny videos. So yeah, I, you always I, got good videos. I steal other people's content. That's what I do. You do. I know, and I'm sometimes kidding. without credit. No, no, never do credit. I at least like do the proper re retweet or I say where it came from if they didn't actually tweet it. If it's something good, I'll give them credit. Anyway, we have completely digressed. Thanks for listening, everybody. All right, bye. Uh, we can keep going.